I'm Laura Davis and today I'm going to read for you The Little Black Fish. This is published by Tiny Owl Books, written by Samad Barangi and with beautiful illustrations by Farshid Mbeskali. It's one of my favourite books by Tiny Owl and so I hope that you enjoy it as much as I do. As the nights grew longer and the year turned towards winter once more, an old fish settled herself to tell a story. She was telling the story to her 12,000 grandchildren fishes. It was an exciting story full of danger and some sadness, but it was a story that also carried wisdom. The old fish wanted her grandchildren to learn from little black fish's story without them having to go into the dangers and sadnesses of life themselves. There was once a little black fish who lived with his mother in a short length of stream between one waterfall and another. The stream changed with the weather, but otherwise it was much the same day after day, running water and other fish, all swimming up and down and around. They weren't very nice or very clever fish. Not you again, they said as they met each other again and again and again. Well, who else did you expect to meet? You're not likely to meet anybody new here, are you? At night, the stream went dark, except when the moon was bright in the sky. Little black fish saw flickers of moonlight through the thick moss roof of the stone house he shared with his mother. He longed to go out into the nighttime stream to see the moon properly. The moon in the sky must see so much, thought little black fish. She must be able to see what is beyond our stream. Little Blackfish tried to push the moss away so that he could talk to the moon and ask questions. But put that moss back, said his mother. Don't you go out into the night and get killed, my child. Of all the 10,000 legs I've laid, you are the only one to hatch and survive. I'm not letting any harm come to you. So Little Black Fish just had to wonder what might be beyond the stream, because it seemed that he would never be able to find out. Little Black Fish was thinking so much about where the water that flowed into their stream came from and where it flowed out to, that he wasn't swimming properly alongside his mother on their daily swims up and down and around. Keep up, said his mother. What is the matter with you, child? Come on, we must swim up and down and around just as the other fishes do, or they'll start to think that there's something wrong with us. We don't want to be different. There was something wrong with Little Black Fish. He ached with longing to go beyond the stream and to discover for himself what might be there. One night he couldn't sleep for wondering, so next morning he said to his mother, I have decided something, but you won't like it. Then don't tell it to me, said his mother, you silly child. Come along and swim with the others before they think that you are odd. But I'm not going to swim with them, or with you any more, said the little black fish. I must swim beyond the stream and explore. I want to see if the stream goes on and on, or whether it comes to an end. Don't you want to know that too? No, I don't, said his mother. I might have when I was young, like you, but I learnt sense as I grew up, and you must too. The stream just flows and is. That's all, and that's enough. We don't need to know any more than that. But it must flow to somewhere, said Little Black Fish, and it must come to an end, mustn't it? Just as days end, and nights end, and years end, and... Oh, that's silly talk, said his mother. Come on, it's time to swim up and down and around and forget all your nonsense. But no, said Little Black Fish. I don't want to spend my life swimming up and down and around and then grumbling that there isn't anything more to life. Perhaps there is more to life. And perhaps the world is more than our stream. Our stream is the world, said his mother. Just then, one of the neighbouring fish came to see what they were arguing about. It's time to swim up and down and around, said the nosy neighbour fish. 
Are you having with trouble with your child, neighbour? I am, said Little Blackfish's mother. The silly child wants to swim beyond the stream to see the world. The nosy neighbour turned to Little Blackfish. What makes you think that you know more than your mother when she has lived in the world so much longer than you? That made Little Blackfish angry. I know that I am bored of swimming up and down and round. I know that I don't want to end up as a moany old fish like you. Disgraceful, shouted the nosy neighbour fish. <clears throat> I am sorry, said Little Blackfish's mother. Somebody wicked must have put those ideas into his head. No, they didn't, said Little Blackfish. I have eyes to see and a brain to think I have my own ideas. It must have been that twisty little snail who made him think this way, said the nosy neighbour. Oh, that snail was certainly a bad influence, said Little Blackfish's mother. I never did trust him. He wasn't one of us. He was my friend, said Little Blackfish. Fishes have no business being friends with snails, said his mother. And they have no business being enemies with snails either, said Little Blackfish. But you killed him. You killed my friend. Well, that's all in the past now, said the nosy neighbour, and it was just as well, considering the things he said. He only said the same things that I say now, said Little Blackfish. So you're going to kill me too? Their arguing had attracted many more nosy fish from the stream to come and see what the fuss was about. They all had opinions to offer. That child should be made to do as his elders and betters tell him to. He should be punished. But now Little Blackfish's mother was getting scared. Don't you hurt my child. Well, if you can't bring him up to be a proper fish, what do you expect? Asked another. I'm ashamed to be living near to you. That's when Little Blackfish's friends came to the rescue. While the moany old fishes talked nastily about Little Blackfish and his mother, Little Blackfish's friends swum to surround him and they swam him away from the crowd. If you go, Little Blackfish, we won't want you back, shouted a nasty old fish. Oh, what can I do? cried Little Blackfish's mother. Don't cry for me, mother, called Little Blackfish. I am happy to go, and maybe I will return one day and tell you all what I found. Little Blackfish's friends went with him to the waterfall at the end of their stream. Thank you, said Little Blackfish. Don't forget me when I'm gone. How could we forget you? said his friends. You are being brave in order to find out more. We admire you. Goodbye. Little Blackfish slid down the waterfall, whee, to fall into a deep, still pool, quite different from the stream he had just left. There were thousands of small black tadpoles in that still water, and they had never seen a fish before. They laughed. Look at that thing. He's not like us. He's strange. Don't be unkind to me, said Little Blackfish. Let me introduce myself. My name is Little Blackfish. What are your names? Tadpole. Mm, tadpole. Tadpole, they all said. Are you all called Tadpole, said Little Blackfish. Of course, said one Tadpole. We are all the finest sort of tadpoles. I'm the prettiest. Not like you. Little Blackfish laughed. How can you know that you are fine and pretty when you've never met anybody else? Don't you know that there are other creatures who also think that they are the finest and the prettiest? You're all wrong. No, you're the one who is wrong, said the tadpoles. We swim around the world all day long, but there are only our parents and us, so and some teeny weeny worms that don't count anyway. You don't go around the world, you know. You just go around this pool, said Little Blackfish. But this pool is the world, said the tadpoles. Don't you wonder where your waterfall comes from, asked Little Blackfish. It comes from a place outside your pool. It comes from the place where I lived. And that place is different from this pool. <laughs> You're silly, said the tadpoles. We don't believe you. Oh well, thought Little Blackfish. Some creatures just like to stay ignorant, but perhaps they get wise when they get older. So Little Blackfish asked the tadpoles, where is your mother? Here I am, said a gruff voice behind Little Blackfish, making him start with a splash. The frog was sitting on a rock by the pool. What do you want? she asked. 
I heard what you were telling my children and you've no right to make up stories about other places. I've lived in this pool all my life and I know that there's no world beyond it. You're trying to trick my children into following you. Oh, honestly, said frustrated little black fish. Even if you live a hundred times as long as you already have, you'll stay as ignorant as you are. Which was a rude thing to say to the frog, but little black fish had enough of being told off for one day. The big frog leapt into the water towards little black fish, but flick, flick went little black fish's tail and whew, off he shot, disturbing the mud and worms at the bottom of the pool as he made his escape. If little black fish had been able to look down on the valley, as the moon did each night, he would have seen that it was a valley with as many bends as those wriggly worms. He would have seen that the stream became bigger and fuller and wider the further along the valley it travelled. It glinted like silver string when the moon shone down, and that silver string forked off in two different directions at a place where a big rock sat in the water. But it was still daytime now in the hot sunshine, and a lizard as big as a big man's hand lay on that rock, basking in the warmth and watching a crab on the sand eating a frog. The lizard spotted something small and black in the water. It was Little Black Fish. Little Black Fish was also watching something. He was watching the crab, which was a creature of the kind he'd never seen before. It had big pincers and it scuttled sideways when it moved. Truly, the world beyond the stream was full of surprises. Hello, strange creature, said Little Black Fish. I'm a crab, said the crab. Do come closer, little one and then you can see me properly. Come on. <laughs> you don't catch me that easily, said Little Black Fish. I'm going to see the world and I don't want to be eaten by you, sir, before I've seen it all. Are you scared of me? asked the crab in a mocking voice. No, oh, diddums. I just use my eyes and brain to work out what your game is, said Little Black Fish. I don't need to prove my bravery to you and I can see exactly what you're doing to that poor frog. The crab smiled. Oh, I'm only eating the frog because I don't like having frogs around the place. They are arrogant and think that the world belongs to them. It doesn't. So I'm tidying things up, you see. You've nothing to worry about because you aren't a frog. Come close. Come. As he spoke, the crab was scuttling over to get nearer to Little Black Fish. Little Black Fish thought that his sideways scuttling looked funny and he was laughing as he backed away from those pincers coming nearer. <laughs> You can't, began little blackfish, but before he could finish what he was about to say, a huge black shadow fell over the water and something, bonk, knocked the crab deep into the sand. What? began the little blackfish. He looked up to see more new creatures. There was a shepherd boy with goats and sheep and one of the goats had butted the crab into the sand as it put its head down to drink. Little Black Fish watched in amazement and listened to the strange bleating sounds that he'd never ever heard before. The world had so many new things to show him. How many more new things might he find before he found the end of the stream? The lizard had been laughing at the crab's struggle to get out of the sand, so Little Black Fish asked the lizard, Dear lizard, I am on my way to find the end of the stream. You sit there and see what goes on in the world. Is there any advice that you can give me? Well, said the lizard, you must look out for pelicans, and if you get as far as the sea, you must look out for swordfish and seabirds. What are pelicans? asked the little blackfish. They are big birds and tricky birds, said the lizard. Pelicans have pouches that hang from their big beaks. They swim in the water and catch fish in those pouches, and if they are hungry, they swallow the fishes into their stomachs. What if they aren't hungry? asked Little Black Fish hopefully. Then they keep the fish in their pouches until they are hungry, said the lizard. Oh, said Little Black Fish. I don't think I want to meet one of them. I can give you a knife that will let you cut your way out of a pouch, if you like, said the lizard. Oh, yes please, said Little Black Fish. The lizard crawled into the crack of the rock and returned with a very tiny knife made from a thorn. Thank you, said Little Black Fish. Do you give knives to all the fish you meet? 
just to the clever ones who ask the right questions, asked the lizard, said the lizard. Lots of fish have escaped the pouches of pelicans, thanks to me. And now those fish work together to escape from the fishermen too. How do they do that? asked little black fish. By working together, laughed the lizard. One fish alone could never escape. But hundreds, all working together, can drag a fisherman's net to the bottom of the sea where they can do no harm. Then the lizard put her ear to the crack of the rock. <gasps> My children have woken up. I must go. She disappeared into the crack. So little black fish set off once more, swimming and thinking. Could the stream really go all the way to what they called the sea? A place with swordfish and seabirds. There were so many new things to see along the way that little black fish didn't have time to worry about pelicans and swordfish and seabirds for long. It was such fun. Whee! Splash! Falling down waterfalls, diving down into the depths before wriggling upwards to start swimming again. Little black fish felt the sun's warmth on his back and he ate and felt himself getting bigger and stronger all the time. That was just as well. Because the more that Little Black Fish found out about the world, the more he realised that it was a dangerous as well as a beautiful place. At one spot, a beautiful doe was drinking water from the stream. Little Black Fish wanted to talk to the doe and find out about the land world. Hello, he said. Pretty doe, will you talk to me? A hunter is chasing me, said the doe. I must hurry away. He has already shot me once. And the doe limped away so that Little Black Fish knew that was true, and he felt sad. As he swam on down the stream, Little Black Fish saw turtles napping in the warmth of the sun. He heard the laughter of little quail birds echoing in the valley. The wonderful smells of mountain herbs came and went into the air and water. The world could be cruel, but it could be wonderful too. The further downstream Little Black Fish swam, the wider and wider the stream became. It gushed through woodlands, where the sunlight dappled through tree branches. Little Black Fish was enjoying the swimming. He hadn't met any other fish since he had left his home, a bit of stream, but now he was suddenly surrounded by tiny fish. Are you new around here? they asked. Yes, said Little Black Fish. I've come from far away upstream. Where are you going to? asked the tiny fish. I'm going to find the end of the stream, said Little Black Fish. Which stream? asked the tiny fish. This one that we're swimming in, answered Little Black Fish. Oh, we call this the river, said the tiny fish. Do you know that you will meet a pelican if you keep going down the river? I have heard of pelicans, said Little Black Fish. Another tiny fish asked, and do you know what a huge pouch the pelican has and what he does with it? Mm, I have been told about that too, said Little Black Fish, and he felt with his fin that he still had the thorn knife with him and was glad of it. Why do you go towards the pelican and danger? asked the same tiny fish. I want to know what is at the end of the stream, so I have to take the risks and be brave, said Little Black Fish. When they heard that, some of the tiny fish wanted to go to the end of their river with Little Black Fish, but their parents wouldn't let them. They told Little Black Fish, if it wasn't for the danger of the pelican's pouch, we could come with you, but the danger is too great and we are scared. Beside the river, there was a village and little black fish saw lots of people. He watched the women and girls of the village come and wash dishes and clothes in the river. Little fish listened to their chatter and he watched children splashing and laughing in the shallows. It was all very interesting, but it wasn't the end of the stream, so he must be brave and travel onwards. Little black fish swam and swam until night came when he settled to sleep under a rock. But in the middle of the night, little black fish woke up. He saw moonlight on the water, lighting everywhere with a mysterious silver light. It was beautiful. And this time little black fish could talk to the moon as he so longed to do. Hello, pretty moon, he said. And the moon replied, hello, little black fish. You are a long way from home. Yes, said Little Black Fish, I'm seeing the world. Moon smiled. The world is huge. From down there you can't see it all as I can. I'm happy just to see more of the stream, said Little Black Fish. I just want to see it at the end. He was about to ask the moon how the world looked from so far away. 
but a cloud began to side, slide over the moon, shadowing the lovely light. Don't go, moon. Oh, I wish you could light the world with your light all the time, called Little Blackfish. The sliver of moon still visible in the sky smiled. My dear little fish, I don't actually have any light of my own. I simply shine light from the sun down onto the earth. I would love to visit you, said Little Blackfish. Humans have visited me, said the moon. Perhaps one day fish too will come to me. Who knows what might be possible? Little black fish wanted to know more, but the dark cloud had finally covered the moon and she was gone. Little black fish was woken early the next morning by a whisper chattering of tiny fish. When they saw that little black fish was awake, the tiny fishes all said, Good morning, big black fish. To them, little black fish was big. You followed me after all, said Little Black Fish. We did, said one of the tiny fish, but we are still scared. We really don't want to meet a pelican, but we do want to see the world. If you worry too much about dangers, you will never do anything interesting, said Little Black Fish. And the world is... But before he could finish what he was saying, the watery world went suddenly dark. Something came up from under them and something else from above trapped. A pelican has got us in his pouch, said Little Black Fish. But don't worry, little friends, because I know a way to escape. The tiny fish were crying. They weren't listening properly to what Little Black Fish had said. One of them told him, you tricked us, big black fish. Now the pelican will swallow us all and we will die. Their dark pouch prison shook and a scary chuckle echoed in the pouch water. The pelican was laughing. He said, you poor little teeny tiny fish who are hardly big enough to make a meal. Shall I swallow you all or shall I take pity and spare one or two of you to swim another day? Hmm? <laughs> he thought it was all a great joke, but it wasn't funny for the fishes. The tiny fish were desperate. They pleaded with the pelican. Oh, your highness, Sir Pelican, we know that you are great and good and kind. If you could kindly open your noble beak just a little bit to let us tiny fish out, then you can keep the big black fish for your dinner. And we can tell all who we meet what a noble, kind bird you are. Another of the tiny fish said, Oh, Sir Pelican, we were only in your waters because the big black fish tricked us. Please forgive us for trespassing. I didn't trick you, said little black fish to the tiny ones. Do you think that you can save yourselves by getting me killed? That is exactly what they thought. <laughs> said the pelican. Yes, tiny fish, I will forgive you, but on one condition. Name your condition, your highness, said the tiny fishes. Kill the black fish yourselves, and then I shall grant your freedom, said the pelican. No, said little black fish. He told the tiny fish, don't listen to that cunning bird who wants to set us against each other. I have a plan which can save us all. But the foolish tiny fish were too scared to listen to little black fish. And together they moved towards him to attack. We can save ourselves by killing you, said the tiny fishes. No, you can't, said little black fish. The pelican won't ever let you go. I'll prove it to you. How, said the tiny fishes. Like this, said little black fish. I will play dead as if you have killed me. And then we shall see if the pelican releases you or not. If the pelican is true to his word, then I will release you myself with my knife. Little Blackfish took out his thorn knife to show that he could do what he said he would. All right then, said fishes, said the tiny fishes. We'll pretend to fight you, and then you pretend to be dead. So that's what they did. And when Little Blackfish lay still in the bottom of the pelican's pouch, the tiny fishes said, Oh, your highness, Sir Pelican, we've killed Big Blackfish just as you wanted. Ha <laughs> ha, said the pelican. Well done, tiny fish. As your reward, I will swallow you all alive so that you can enjoy a good tour of my belly. And in the blink of an eye, those tiny fish were gulped down the pelican's throat. So Little Blackfish lifted up his knife and he cut open that nasty lying pelican's pouch and flick flick with his tail, away he swam through the hole in the pouch, off into the river once more. Little Blackfish swam and swam until there was no valley, there were no mountains, and the river flowed widely over a flat plain. 
Small streams joined the river from left and from right, bringing more and more water. So this river is the end of lots of streams, thought Little Blackfish in wonder. So much water to swim in. Little Blackfish no longer had to swim around rocks or be careful not to swim into the bank. He could swim wherever he liked. But suddenly, BAM! Little Blackfish was being attacked by a big, thin fish with a mouth in the shape of a double-edged saw. It was the swordfish he had heard about, and in this great wide river there was nowhere to hide. Little Blackfish dived downwards and flicked side to side, trying to get away from those terrifying teeth. He swam down into the, the depths of the river, where he came across a shoal of thousands and thousands of fish. Please help me, said Little Blackfish to one of the fishes in the shoal. I've come from far away and now I've escaped from the swordfish, but where am I? The fish spoke over his shoulder to the other fishes. Look, he said, here's another one asking the same question that they all do. Then he said to Little Blackfish, this, my friend, is the sea. The sea, said Little Blackfish in wonder. Yes, said the fish, it is where all streams and rivers end. Are you going to join our shoal? You'd be very welcome. Thank you, said Little Blackfish. I think that I'll just swim around on my own a bit first. I want to explore the sea and then I will join your shoal. I would like to work with you to drag down a fisherman's net. Enjoy your swim, said the fish. But if you swim to the surface, be sure to stay clear of the seabird. She likes to catch four or five fishes every day. And if you're not careful, you'll be one of them. Little Blackfish swam in the sea on his own. He could feel the power of the sea as he swam and he saw the bottoms of boats and seaweed and shells. The glint of sunlight bouncing on the surface lured him up to the warm surface of the sea. He swam happily, thinking, even if I died right now, I have seen the stream to its end and I know how it turns into sea. I must try and return to tell my friends all that I now know. The little blackfish's thoughts were brought to a shocking end as the seabird swooped and snatched him from the sea. Little blackfish wriggled in the seabird's beak, but he couldn't escape and he was suffocating in the air as the seabird flew him away from the water. I wish you would swallow me quickly, thought little blackfish. At least I could breathe for a while in the water in her stomach. Quickly, seabird, gasped little blackfish. I am the sort of fish who turns to poison once I die, so swallow me alive now. The seabird said nothing because she thought that Little Blackfish was tricking her into talking and opening her beak. Little Blackfish could see that the sea under them was about to turn into land. If the seabird dropped him onto land, he could never survive. So he said, I will die in your beak before you reach your chicks and then you will be offering them poison, gasped Little Blackfish. Save your children by swallowing me yourself now. Little Blackfish's body became limp and still, and the seabird began to worry that he was already dead, so that he would poison her if she ate him. Little Blackfish, are you still breathing? she asked. And of course, speaking meant that she opened her beak. Out jumped Little Blackfish, and he fell through the air with the seabird diving after him to fall, splash, into wonderful, reviving seawater in which he could breathe again. Only for the seabird to catch him up in her beak once more. And this time she did swallow him whole, down into her dark, damp stomach. Little black fish was not alone in that dark stomach. A very tiny little fish was curled in a corner, crying. Don't be so frightened, little one, said little black fish. Try to be a brave fish and we will think what we can do to get out of here. How can we possibly escape, said the tiny fish. I may not be able to save myself, but I can save you, said Little Blackfish. And I can save other fish too, by killing the seabird, so that she doesn't ever kill fish again. But how? said the tiny fish again. He wasn't crying now. Little Blackfish held up his thorn knife. I will cut the seabird from inside, he said. But first I must save you, tiny fish. I am going to wriggle to tickle the seabird's stomach with my tail. She will want to laugh, and that means she will open her beak. You must be ready to jump out as soon as her beak opens. But what about you? asked the tiny fish. Don't you worry about me. You just swim for your life. Back to the shoal where you can be safe, said Little Blackfish. Then Little Blackfish started to wriggle this way and that, fluttering his tail to tickle the seabird's belly. The tiny fish was ready and as soon as the seabird opened her beak to laugh, the tiny fish jumped out of her mouth and escaped. 
The tiny fish waited in the water for a while, hoping, hoping to see little black fish escape too, but that didn't happen. What did happen was that the seabird suddenly flapped with terror and pain, and then she died, falling into the water. But the little black fish was never seen again. And that was the end of Old Fish's story. It's bedtime now, she told her 12,000 grandchildren. But you didn't tell us what happened to the tiny fish who was saved by little black fish, said the children. That's a story for another night, said their grandmother. Good night. 11,999 little fishes said good night and went straight to sleep. Grandma Fish fell asleep too. But one little red fish couldn't sleep for thinking about that story. All night she thought of how the stream turned into a river and then into sea and all the wonderful things you could meet along the way. And that is the end of The Little Black Fish. I hope that you enjoyed it and um, thank you.